Hey guys, um, yeah, basically just got back from our Gambia last night. Um, big weekend on the camera and heckling and a few beers or four or ten. Um, somehow while I was down there, I managed to catch a bug. Uh, it's not the big COVID, but uh, it is pretty shit. Um, just been coughing, sniffing, doing all the usual shit. Um, it's kind of sad, kind of annoying because I don't really want to train when I feel like this. Mm -hmm. I guess another thing is like if I'm going to the gym, I don't want to be spreading this sickness or illness or whatever it is I've got to others because, uh, you know, could be worse for them or whatever. So, um, yeah, just taking the day off and might go for a bit of a walk or something and then uh, back into it tomorrow. So, yeah, a bit of a hump in the road, but it's nothing serious. So should be getting back at it quickly. As I mentioned uh, earlier in this episode, um, got the sniffles, so I'm not at the gym today. Uh, so I thought I'd do something pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna lace these Factor hubs into some DT 511s um, using some silver DT comp spokes. Um, like the comp spokes because they're a double butted spoke, so there's a bit of flex in the middle where they're 1.8 mil and the extra two mil at the ends just um, helps them with any strength issues. So you get a nice light spoke um, and a bit of flex as well, so your wheels aren't too stiff. I have run straight gauge before, um, just found them a bit too stiff. So uh, finally discovering that spoke tension isn't everything. So uh, yeah, the thinner spokes do give you a bit more flexi wheel, which I like just for a comfort reason and. I find the flex gives a bit more grip. Um, as I said, got these factor hubs, uh, lots of engagement there. I think it's 120 points of engagement and they're a basic six ball hub. So there's not much to go wrong there. Um, and they're bloody light and the machining on these things is rad. Um, super impressed with these hubs and stoked I finally got some in. So thanks for two up. Um, rims were super hard for me to find. So I got some EX 511s from Wheel Ride here in Adelaide. Um, they're basically a unicorn. I did want 471s because I think a slightly um, narrow rim might give me a better balloon on the tires, but these were all I could get. So they're a 30 mil inner diameter, uh, inner width. So nice bag with the Pirelli Scorpions I'm gonna put on there. Um, yeah, should tube this up nice and easy. And yeah, can't wait to get these things built. So uh, let me take you through the process. Um, got two different legs here, at 290 and 292. Um, so what I'm going to do is just get my piece of paper cloth and just write D and ND, D for drive side and ND for non-drive side. So your drive side is going to be a little bit shorter uh, just because of the flan width. So I'm going to go and grab 16-ish of them. Sixteen ish, and they go back in this one, and I slide that guy closed. So I get them again. I'm gonna get sixteen ish of them. That's not sixteen. That's probably about fourteen. Demonte Tech regular form of lube. Get them in a nice little pile. Definitely mix them up there. I'm just gonna take the lid off and drop some lube on those guys. That way, when I put the spokes on, they'll be nice and lubed up. Obviously, I've messed them up a little bit. Let's see how it goes. All my stuff ready, it's all good to go. I'm gonna grab my lead spoke, is what they call it, from the dry side, find the, the logo. I'm going to insert it about a quarter way around into that hole there from the outside in. This will make life a lot easier later on, but it also builds a stronger wheel because it's the lead spoke and the tension will be going this way from the inside, so the stress is nice. I'm going to go and find my rim, find the valve hole, count one, two, spoke holes across. Insert it into the hole there. 
There is a wash already in there. Um, it's just stuck there from the lube. I'm just gonna put this Pro Lock thing on. They do like the alloy. The Pro Locks do like a washer. So it is good to install it. So I'm gonna get my next spoke, insert it two across. So one, two on the hub. Loop that through, give it a nice little bend. Oop, wrong way around. So you want the head of the spoke to be on the outside of the hub here. You're gonna bend it in, just let it settle. And you're gonna go one, two, three, four. And in the fourth hole across, you're gonna put this guy on. Now there's no washer in there, so I'll make sure I grab it and put it with a washer on it. Slide that bad boy on. And we repeat that 16 times, which is good fun. Done that eight times, not 16, and dropped all my shit everywhere. Um, I am going to start on the next side. So I'm going to find our lead spoke, which is the valve hole, and our lead spoke again is to the right of that lead spoke. So you'll see on your hub that when you got the lead spoke here, the holes on the other side don't line up 100%. They're offset a little bit. So what we're going to do is because we're going close to the valve hole, we're going to go the one that's offset a little bit to the valve hole and awkwardly put that through. And that is going to go into the, the, the spoke hole that is left. If you're looking at the hub from here, it's left of the lead spoke. And basically we're going to do that eight times around. Where we get the uh, start to get the shape going. Now you see it's all moving around. When I get every little twist, it starts to get that shape. The shape you're looking for. Yeah. Hopefully, I've got that shape I'm looking for. Get all those washers around there. Now, this is the part where you start to realize why it's called three cross wheel building for these. So, let's find my leaf spoke again, which is just over here. Now, I'll get my dry side spoke and chuck it in one of the holes. Not from that side because it's wrong. Go from the inside to the outside for this one. So the head of the spoke is on the inside, not in the lightweight reducing hole, in the actual spoke hole. Again, pull it across. So now we're going to cross one, two, three, of the spokes, you can see if I can like this, one, two, and three, and on that third spoke, you're gonna to wanna to go under. So it sits over, over, under. My nan taught me that when we were crocheting back in the day. And you hope to God it fits in a hole. There should be a nice little gap there, so there should be one whole gap. So I've got a spoke left over, which is uh, always good. Um, means I can't count to 32, or 16 even. Now, the reason we look so closely at the way these guys are laced up and you wanna do everything in that order is so that you don't end up with a crossover over your valve hole. You got this nice open area. Um, that's so you can put your pump head on and everything else. The reason we started with that spoke uh, 40, sorry, 90 degrees off from the logo is so that the logo will actually line up with the hole, the valve hole, which is good for your Instagram photos, good for wheel building credit and gets you many kudos. But the other thing is, is when you're racing or you need to go on, do something with your valve and you're looking down at the wheel and then you spin it, you'll know there's two logos on here, but it's gonna be at the end of one of them. So you can look down and go, oh, there's that one, not there. 
spin around, there's my valve hole. You know, like it's super quick. So that's the other reason I do it. So you can find that valve nice and quickly if you're looking down at it. What I'm gonna do now is chuck this in the um, wheel touring stand and uh, put some lube between the nipple and the rim. Let's give it a quick spin and then uh, gonna wind all these nipples down to the end of the thread so that they will be at the same spot. And hopefully that means you won't have to do too much dishing afterwards. I know I've got two of the wrong spokes in here somewhere, so I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with that. around and make sure they're all kind of at the end of the thread um, now so the nipples actually stopped at the end of the thread this way give it a bit of a spin notice it's wobbling a little bit it's also got a bit of a hop in it as well um, so this is where we start to tension up and uh, get all the spokes into tension and while we're doing that I do like to just kind of true it both laterally and vertically just to make sure that everything's all right. So you just kind of line your truing stand up, not as important at the start, but it is good to kind of, I like to do it this process so you don't get to the end and you're working with spokes under tension. Um, you're working with looser spokes and you can kind of get it dialed in. So in all of these processes, as usual, I find that the valve hole and you always start from the valve hole and finish at the valve hole, start and finish. That valve hole is very important in this process and yeah, helps with everything. So, time for the fun and long part of the wheel build. as well when you're doing this tensioning process like you can see it's starting to get there but when you do a tensioning it's all about doing one full turn at a time and bringing it around and tensioning everything evenly a nice even tension on the wheel um, will build a strong wheel you can build the best parts in the world but if you don't tension it correctly it just ends up turning to shit so I try to tension everything up um, at even things and it should kind of pull itself together. Um, it's still a bit wobbly but I'll get it sorted. So now it's the second way around. You can see it's starting to get some real tension. Some spokes are a bit odd. So this is where I start to pull everything in a little bit and actually pay attention. So you can hear it's starting. It's quite a big level. So I'll go in and work out how I'm gonna adjust that from. So basically I'm up to tension after doing that. I've still got a few loose spokes and stuff, so I'm just gonna go through and tighten them up. Basically as I'm doing this process, if the wheel was moving up, which I call a hop, if the wheel moves up, you kind of loosen two to four spokes there to bring it down. If it's got a dip where it comes down and touches here, then you tighten two to four spokes up to bring the rim up. So what you'll do is you'll end up chasing that around the rim because as you bring it up here, it might come down there. As you bring it down there, it might go up here and balancing that will bring the wheel to tension. And as you slowly get there, you just kind of find the looser spokes and tighten them up until they get to a certain tension where there won't be any hop or dip. 
Um, as you're doing that as well, you want to make sure that you've got no lateral movement as well. So if your wheel is going too far to the right or your left, um, you tighten the spokes on the opposite side to bring it across. What you've got to pay attention to though is, say if you've got a loose spoke here and a tight spoke over here and it's going that way, then you want to tighten this loose spoke to bring it across. If they're both tight, it's about balancing that tension again. So you want to undo the spoke on the side that it's coming to and tighten the other ones to bring it across. So it's all about just balancing tension. Um, yeah, our prime minister probably learned a bit about this, but um, yeah, just go through and keep tensioning her up. Um, usually you'd use a spoke meter to kind of measure, measure it, but I don't know where mine is. So I'll be using the trusted ting test later on and to see how it goes, but it is shaping up nicely. It's a nice little wheel. Cool, so now it's all done up to tension. Everything seems good, there's nothing really loose. It's all spinning nice and straight and you think your wheel is done. This is where the fun part comes. Again, so I don't have a dishing tool here. Um, Pedro's does a really cool one. Um, but what I like to do, my wheel drink stand claws are off center. Um, that's why I like it, I always true side to side anyway. <coughs> Um, so what I'll do is basically get that jaw to just touch the rim there, undo my stand, voila, and slip it around. Oh, not bad. So it's actually about two mil away from the rim now, so which means my wheel is no longer in center of the hub. So what I've got to do is bring the rim across a little bit. Um, this can be quite confusing for some, especially if you use the dishing tool um, because it measures off the center of the hub. So a lot of people get confused with moving the hub, um, which is another way I like to do this. It always confuses me. I like to do it this way because I know, oh, I've got to bring the rim across. So what I'll do is just give a little turn on that guy, just so it sits around halfway and I know that I'll be coming across. So I've got to go across to the right so what I'll be doing is undoing the spokes on the left side of the rim and tightening them up on the right. What you'll notice though is uh, the reason there's two different leg spokes is because the offset from the center of the hub on the drive side is different to the disc. So these disc sides sit out further. So the disc side spokes will pull the rim across um, quicker with each turn. Um, it's the best way to put it. So, Half a turn on the non-drive side will do a mill of adjustment, whereas half a turn on the non on the drive side, sorry, will do half a mill of movement. So sometimes you need to do two times a turn on that and half as much on that. Um, it's just skill and you pick it up as your time goes along, but you just want to make sure that everything's nice and tight, which it is. Again, if you're an amateur builder, which I am, but I've done this enough, um, it's good to have a spoke tension meter, a tensionometer, and uh, check the spoke tensions, but I know where I kind of like it, and then I'll probably borrow a mates later on just to double check. But to be honest and without bragging, I'm usually pretty close. So that's how you build a wheel, guys. Um, I forgot, well, the camera kind of messed up and didn't record the last bit, but it's important that you go around and uh, stress those spokes. Um, just make sure everything settles in and then just give it another once over and it should be good to go um, once it's up to tension um, so it's been a week since Mount Gambia um, as you can tell I'm still super blocked up um, got a really bad cough <coughs> that wasn't fake so hopefully I'm uh, just gonna chill over the weekend and do as little as possible um, someone's got to do it right and uh, hopefully get back in the gym next week um, doing Sean's program but I'll probably uh, just ease into it a little bit just so I'm not dragging myself too much. Um, i a hectic week at work as well. So yeah, sorry I haven't had much gym stuff. Um, hopefully the most awkward wheel building uh, video in the 
world was okay for you and uh yeah thanks everyone for following along and thanks everyone for the messages and, and saying they're kind of motivated by this so yeah sorry to let you guys down for this week but uh unfortunately the man flu was real um yeah no covid but like, the man flu is worse i reckon all right peace out we'll see you next week